The Works of Benjamin Franklin, Volume 1, Chapter 15. Self-denial, not the essence of virtue. By Benjamin Franklin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Daniel Cranston. Self-denial, not the essence of virtue. It is commonly asserted that without self-denial, there is no virtue, and that the greater the self-denial, the greater the virtue. If it were said that he who cannot deny himself anything he inclines to, though he knows it will be to his hurt, has not the virtue of resolution or fortitude, it would be intelligent enough. But as it stands, it seems obscure or erroneous. Let us consider some of the virtues singly. If a man has no inclination to wrong people in his dealings, if he feels no temptation to it, and therefore never does it, can it be said that he is not a just man? If he is a just man, has he not the virtue of justice? If to a certain man idle diversions have nothing in them that is tempting, and therefore he never relaxes his application to business for their sake, is he not an industrious man? Or has he not the virtue of industry? I might, in like manner, instance in all the rest of the virtues. But to make the thing short, as it is certain that the more we strive against the temptation to any vice, and practice the contrary virtue, the weaker will that temptation be, and the stronger will be that habit, till at length the temptation has no force or entirely vanishes. Does it follow from thence that in our endeavors to overcome vice, we grow continually less and less virtuous? Till at length we have no virtue at all? If self-denial be the essence of virtue, then it follows that the man who is naturally temperate, just, etc., is not virtuous but that in order to be virtuous, he must, in spite of his natural inclination, wrong his neighbors, and eat and drink, etc., to excess. But perhaps it may be said that by the word virtue in the above assertion is meant merit, and so it should stand thus. Without self-denial, there is no merit, and the greater the self-denial, the greater the merit. The self-denial here meant must be when our inclinations are towards vice, or else it would still be nonsense. By merit is understood desert, and when we say a man merits, we mean that he deserves praise or reward. We do not pretend to merit anything of God, for he is above our services, and the benefits he confers on us are the effects of his goodness and bounty. All our merit, then, is with regard to one another, and from one to another. Taking then the assertion as it last stands, if a man does me a service from a natural benevolent inclination, 
does he deserve less of me than another who does me the like kindness against his inclination? If I have two journeymen, one naturally industrious, the other idle, but both perform a day's work equally good, ought I to give the latter the most wages? Indeed, lazy workmen are commonly observed to be more extravagant in their demands than the industrious. For if they have not more for their work, they cannot live as well. But though it be true to a proverb that lazy folks take the most pains, does it follow that they deserve the most money? If you were to employ servants in affairs of trust, would you not bid more for one you knew was naturally honest than for one naturally roguish, but who has lately acted honestly? For currents, whose natural channel is dammed up, till the new course is by time worn sufficiently deep and become natural, are apt to break their banks. If one servant is more valuable than another, has he not more merit than the other? And yet, this is not on account of superior self-denial. Is a patriot not praiseworthy if public spirit is natural to him? Is a pacing horse less valuable for being a natural pacer? Nor, in my opinion, has any man less merit for having in general natural virtuous inclinations. The truth is that temperance, justice, charity, etc., are virtues, whether practiced with or against our inclinations. And the man who practices them merits our love and esteem. And self-denial is neither good nor bad, but as it is applied. He that denies a vicious inclination is virtuous in proportion to his resolution. But the most perfect virtue is above all temptation, such as the virtue of the saints in heaven. And he who does a foolish, indecent, or wicked thing, merely because it is contrary to his inclination, like some mad enthusiasts I have read of, who ran about naked under the notion of taking up the cross, is not practicing the reasonable science of virtue, but is a lunatic. End of Self-Denial, Not the Essence of Virtue by Benjamin Franklin